Beautiful weather across the bluegrass state today, but an early taste of summer on the way, and I'm tracking it for you in just a moment. Tragedy strikes a Central Kentucky father while he's working for Time Warner Cable. We'll have the latest on how it happened and how he's being remembered. Kentucky's presidential primary ended with Hillary Clinton leading Bernie Sanders by less than 1% of the vote. Now Sanders is asking for a re-canvas. What that means coming up. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. We are turning up the heat in the bluegrass. Here's a live look at downtown Lexington where temperatures have just hit 80 degrees. It's a sunny afternoon. And get used to the 80s because they're sticking around. WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, good looking stuff out there today, Jennifer. Humidity levels really not bad at all. That will change though over the next few days as those thermometers continue to take off. Right now it's upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. 80 as you mentioned in Lexington. Live view outside. Little high cloud cover beginning to stream on in. That is ahead of that big push of moist air, the humid air. The sweat factor is going to be off the charts, uh, at least for May standards as we go through the week. Right now, humidity only at 31%, so it's not too bad at all out there. Defender radar network, I've got the clouds into the mix because we have no precipitation until we get out into parts of Missouri. Look at that complex of thunderstorms zipping across sections of Missouri into Arkansas, cruising toward western Kentucky, and that is the leading edge of our summertime pattern that begins to blow on in here as we go through later tonight and certainly into the day tomorrow. The warm borderline hot air mass will bring a ton of humidity into the mix as well. I'll come back in about 15 minutes and we will track the weather all the way into your Memorial Day. And Jennifer, it is one of those patterns to where one day's forecast pretty much may encompass the entire seven day outlook. Police are investigating the death of a Time Warner cable worker who was killed on the job. Dennis Kokenauer was reportedly on a service call yesterday along Moberly Road in Harrodsburg when he was hit and killed by a car. Kristen Kennedy has the latest from Mercer County in our top story at four. Investigators were out here a majority of the day trying to determine a number of factors, including the speed at which the driver that hit and killed Dennis Kokenauer was going. Harrodsburg police say Monday, Dennis Kokenauer was on a service call on Moberly Road. They say the flashing lights on his work van were on and that he had blocked off an area using a safety cone. It was when he was walking around his van that officers say a driver in an SUV hit him. The driver, we're told, is cooperating with investigators and so far they haven't filed charges. Friends of Kokenauer called him a devoted father of five who loved making people laugh. He was actively involved in our booster club and he would work in the press box doing some announcing or whatever we ask him to do. Ransdell Funeral Home is handling all arrangements. In Harrodsburg, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. And we're told the family is still finalizing funeral arrangements. Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign is requ requesting a re-canvas in Kentucky's presidential primary. Sanders trails Hillary Clinton by less than one half of one percent of the vote. The Sanders campaign says it will ask Kentucky's Secretary of State to have election officials review electronic voting machines and absentee ballots from last week's primary in each of the state's 120 counties. The results will be certified by May 31st. We'll take a closer look at the re-canvas request on WKYT News at 5. Family members say a Moorhead State University police officer faces a long recovery after a motorcycle crash. Sergeant Anthony Dalton was heading home at the end of his shift yesterday morning when he crashed on University Boulevard. The 35-year-old Dalton remains in critical condition at UK Hospital. In a post on the Moorhead State Police Department's Facebook page, Dalton's family says doctors are keeping him heavily sedated to give his brain time to heal. They say he did give a thumbs up and opened his eyes during a neurological exam. Police say Dalton did have a helmet on at the time of the crash. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick is in the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. A big boost today for an organization helping women fight drug addiction. Attorney General Andy Bashir, Senator Robert Stivers, and other lawmakers presented a check worth $450,000 to Independence House Recovery Center in Corbin. The money came from a settlement in the Purdue Pharma case. Coming up on WKYT News at 530, you'll hear from a woman who used the program and has been sober 
for 11 years. The owner of Lee's Ford Marina says he has crews working around the clock to try and get it up and running by this weekend. This past winter snow caused nearly $4 million in damage. Some of the docks collapsed onto boats because of the weight of the snow. He says the repairs are about 90% finished. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, we'll give you a closer look at their progress. Drivers have started to see some large electronic signs popping up around Scott County ahead of a popular bicycling event. The 39th Horsey 100 will take place this weekend. Last year, the event turned tragic after a driver hit and killed cyclist Mark Hinkle. In addition to the electronic signs on the roads, bike routes will be clearly marked and more police officers will patrol them. We'll have more on how Hinkle will be honored ahead on WKYT News at 430. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thank you, Sam. Big news today in horse racing. Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist will not race in the Belmont Stakes because of a high white blood cell count. That means Nyquist will miss a rematch with Exaggerator, who won the Preakness this past Saturday and gave Nyquist his first career loss, ending his shot at the Triple Crown. Trainer Doug O'Neill made the announcement this morning. Nyquist remained stabled at Pimlico with a fever yesterday morning and did not travel to New York when it was discovered he was running a slight fever. Now to a story making headlines across the nation at four. Bill Cosby entered a Pennsylvania courtroom today for a hearing on a case where Cosby is accused of three counts of felony indecent assault. And Cosby left with a court date. In July, Cosby will face his accuser, a former basketball coach at Temple University, who says that during a visit to his home, Cosby gave her pills and wine that left her unable to consent to sex. Scott McLean has the latest. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is Bill Cosby's hometown, where he's most beloved, and now also just down the road from where he'll face trial. Cosby is facing sexual assault charges that date back to 2004. It's not the first accusation. More than 50 other women have come forward since, but it is the first case that could land him in jail. Today, prosecutors cleared their first hurdle, proving there is enough evidence to send the case to trial. We did that through uh, the victim's statement and the defendant's admissions uh, to much of the, of the crime. Cosby's accuser, Andrea Constand, was not in court today, but her 2004 police statement was front and center, describing Cosby giving her blue pills and wine. 20 or 30 minutes later, blurred vision and unable to walk or talk, Constand claims she is aware that Cosby is sexually assaulting her, but is unable to stop it. According to a recently unsealed 2005 civil deposition, Cosby admits he got a prescription for the sedative Quaaludes, drugs he intended to give to women he wanted to have sex with. But Cosby claims it was consensual. Charges were never filed. Police said there wasn't enough evidence. Cosby's lawyers say there still isn't. Their evidence determined back when this investigation unfolded proved that there was no crime committed here. The case will go to trial in July. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. If convicted in this case, Bill Cosby could face up to 10 years behind bars. Toyota is recalling another 1.6 million vehicles in the U.S. because of faulty Takata airbags. That tops today's WKYT Money Watch. The recall includes Toyota, Scion, and Lexus models from the 2006 to 2011 model years. The airbags can explode with too much force and have been linked to at least 11 deaths. Only 140 characters? No more. Twitter is tweaking its character limit. The site will soon take usernames and image links out of your tweet's total character count. The official count will only be for the text. Twitter has a passionate group of more than 300 million users, but its growth has stagnated recently. So the company has been looking for ways to make its service simpler to use. And that's not the only change Twitter is making. It now has a way to let others see your once private replies. You simply retweet them yourself. You'll soon be able to retweet your own comments. A new study finds the average child gets their first phone at the age of 10. A digital trend study also found 38% of young users have internet on their phones. That's twice as many as four years ago. A movie theater in Central Kentucky has a new policy for children. Movie Tavern in Brandon Crossing now says anyone 16 or younger can watch a movie without an adult guardian for shows starting before 5.30 p.m. But theater leaders say film ratings and guidelines will still be enforced. They say children ages 1 through 12 are eligible for child ticket pricing.
A police department is experimenting with an innovative way to keep illegal drones out of the sky. Jonathan Vigliotti shows us how officers are using eagles to do their takedowns. The Dutch National Police Department's newest recruits have wings and an appetite for drones. Hunter the bald eagle is the world's first bird trained to take down drones that cause trouble in the sky. During training, they have proved to be the best uh, bird of prey to take down drones. Sjord Horgendorn developed the program Guard from Above and contracts his eagles out to police. The second that hood is off and Hunter spots a drone, he is off. And with flight speeds of up to 80 miles an hour, there's no escaping his talents. Ben de Kaiser is the trainer. How do you go about training your eagles to go after drones? How? Yeah. What's, what's the <laughs> secret? Yes. Um... He's talking, but are you? <laughs> de Kaiser will only say it's a mission that requires daily training for at least a year. He says the eagle's naturally protected claws allow them to safely grab any consumer drone. Police Chief Mark Vibis says until now, there was no safe, quick way to capture the drones. We expect there to be more drones. People buy them as toys, and uh, some will use them in the wrong uh, place in the wrong way. These recruits have another month of test flights before they can take off and take down the real thing. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, the Netherlands. Dutch researchers are looking into the impact of drone propellers and the impact they might have on the eagle's claws. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A new study suggests it's okay for parents to let babies cry themselves to sleep. Australian researchers say infants left alone while fussing in their cribs fell asleep faster and stayed asleep longer. And babies' stress levels were about the same as when parents used gentler methods such as delaying bedtimes to tire out infants. New research indicates fluctuations in blood pressure can be as worrisome as high blood pressure among older adults. The findings published in an American Heart Association journal found swings in blood pressure were linked to faster declines in brain and cognitive function. A law firm behind a class action lawsuit against Fitbit says the trackers may be miscalculating heart rates. A study by the firm suggests some of Fitbit's pure pulse heart rate monitors are highly inaccurate by as much as 20 beats a minute during intense workouts. Fitbit says the report is biased and that the law firm used a consumer-grade electrocardiogram, not a clinical device, to make the comparison. Menopausal women may be able to reduce insomnia using talk therapy by phone. That's according to researchers in Washington State. A clinical trial involving 100 women found those using phone-based cognitive therapy not only slept better, but suffered less from hot flashes.